Hello friends, uh, today uh, we are again here with uh, another episode of the Think Tank Talk. Today we are going to focus on what the Belt and Road Initiative is and what did uh, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor promise for a country like Pakistan, whether Pakistan has been able to benefit from it and what has really been the footprint and the impact of the Belt and Road Initiative across Asia and Africa and whether it has created problems for recipient countries. To discuss these issues, we have with us Dr. Mohammad Arif, who teaches at the National University of Science and Technology. Welcome, Dr. Arif. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Dr. Arif uh, has been associated uh, with China for quite a bit, has spent uh, several years in China itself trying to promote business between China and Pakistan. So, taking advantage of your presence, uh, may I ask, uh, kick off the conversation first with a very primary question as to what did China-Pakistan Economic Corridor promise for Pakistan? What did China-Pakistan Economic Corridor promise for Pakistan? Uh, thank you, uh, sir. It was uh, a good dream, big dream and dream of prosperity. I was uh, in China at that time and when Xi Jinping announced it, and uh, at that time I was visiting many places of China and I have seen the development of infrastructure, big markets, machinery, new technology over there, prosperity is coming. So uh, I came back to Pakistan and uh, I started talking with people that China is really very uh, prosperous, uh, markets, infrastructure, connectivity, railway lines, airlines, airports are really so amazing, modernized. And uh, uh, later on in 2015, Chinese President Xi Jinping came and he gave the, uh, that idea. So our poverty was going to end and we thought it that Pakistan will be prosperous, new airports will be built, railway lines, road, road infrastructure, connectivity from Xinjiang, from Kashgar, from Gilgit to Gawadar, it will be established and there will be new opening and avenues of the um, business and collaboration and giant joint ventures so if you see so what made you so optimistic because i have seen the china i have seen that infrastructure in china i have seen that economic de development prosperity the booming business the evo city which is the biggest market the guangzhou shenzhen i have seen i have, we have read that oh shenzhen was a village and i have seen that village and the man who brought that change was the chairman deng xiaoping and i went to his, his his Mazar to see him that man who has brought a change in China he has he has modernized China he has uplifted 800 million people from the poverty that is amazing for me it excited me it made me passionate it it made me so that so you're suggesting that the transformation of China came because of Deng Xiaoping it started with him with him exactly and I met a lot of ambassadors of Pakistan who served in Beijing at that time they know that their Beijing was really poor the community services food markets really not that of up to standards but when uh, opening came up in 1979 afterwards China invited foreign investment foreign companies came their exposure increased and the same exposure and investment was happening under the uh, the CPAC so CPAC was uh, bringing new dream new uh, ch opportunities for Pakistan opportunity of investment of manufacturing especially when business goes up the 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 uh, the common people in in any place of the world they will have benefits of the uh, economic prosperity and i think under that um, a dream of uh, economic prosperity um, it was uh, happening really happening and we have seen in last 3 4 years that uh, 8000 kilometer uh, 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 network of roads have been established new markets have emerged around the roads uh, joint ventures between different small and big companies they are taking in pakistan so this is very very important and that dream um, for me uh, i think is uh, coming maybe it will take time but so china has uh, done that and pakistan will do it so the dream is coming about is is being realized uh uh, slowly, it, I think it, it also slowed down in the process. But as a whole, do you think that Pakistan really 
uh, that Pakistan really benefited from what the what what CPEC had promised. Uh, to a great, greater extent, the initial phase has uh, completed very well. Uh, Pakistan faced uh, power shortages. Uh, the power shortage, uh, many companies have invested, and uh, Pakistan has power, power, but. Uh, distribution to public is not uh, because of many fact many factors that's an altogether different story uh, yeah the different story but actually it is a slow process a uh, slow development and uh, development is taking place Chinese are excited enthusiastic and they are passionate to uh, bring Pakistan out of poverty and I think that is happening and if you uh, go on the motorways uh, from any any motorway from Gawada to any part of the Pakistan and you see small industries are coming small zones are coming Chinese small companies are coming they are investing they are teaching to Pakistan this is the earlier phase of the CPEC the Pakistanis in especially Pakistan Faisalabad Gujranwala Lahore or other small industry uh, units they can learn a lot they can make joint ventures with a Chinese and in this way you will prosper and when small unit prospers big industry will start manufacturing and then uh, ultimately prosperity will come but also about uh, the Belt and Road Initiative you know CPAC uh, was the first sort of flagship of uh, Belt and Road Initiative now there was a lot of talk accompanying uh, the CPAC or BRI project that it was bringing a mountain of debt a debt trap uh, for the recipient countries. Is the situation really like that? Uh, factually, it is uh, incorrect and uh, some countries, especially in Central Asia, they have benefited and Pakistan to a greater, on the ground you can see the roads, you can see uh, big uh, manufacturing power plants, uh, companies, they have, uh, uh, they, they have started their businesses, but uh, according to statistics and factually, a lot of research institutions, independent research institutions have proved that, proved that uh, this uh, debt trap was a wrong narrative. Negative, negative narrative just to create a misunderstanding and mistrust between the policy makers and the, the, the implement, implementing forces in Pakistan. So uh, I think uh, Pakistan need to uh, realistically, rationally uh, understand that this is an opportunity, not a debt trap. Yeah, it is certainly uh, offered a lot of opportunities, not only to Pakistan, but also to African countries. So what do you know about that? What difference did uh, the Belt and Road Initiative make to some of the African countries? Uh, first of all, uh, let's understand the primary condition where the BRI comes. The primary condition is people are poor, industry is not working, governments are corrupt or there are no foreign investments. So there is no business action. Actually, BRI or CPAC brings business activity. And for business activity to generate prosperity, to generate revenue, to generate uh, employment, it takes time. So let's wait for that. And uh, Lord Ethiopia, a lot of African countries to, uh, in, in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of small units, manufacturing units, they have benefited from Ch Chinese. They have learned technology. Chinese have transferred technology. Technology. So they slowly they are becoming independent and uh, sooner or later they will be starting their own businesses. I think this is the thing we, we can learn. Uh, we must understand that BRI is not a charity organization. It's a business organization and for business you, have, you will have to launch a project, wait for that. You have to follow certain rules, SOPs and then uh, accomplish that project. When the project is executed, accomplished, it will start generation of revenues revenues will bring profit for you so in Pakistan uh, Chinese are still waiting for the uh, for the projects to to start to uh, put them into operation and when they will start um, operation certainly the the our dream of uh, prosperous development progressive uh, CPAC will come into a realization yeah thank you very much this is uh, precisely the point that the Belt and Road Initiative basically uh, aimed at that was bringing in projects for infrastructure uh, development projects which also take time you know when you put in money that takes time to mature the product once uh, these op op projects become operational then they become they increase the productivity of that uh, respective nation and this was the primary idea behind the belt and road uh, initiatives friends you heard uh, from dr mohammad arif the spirit behind 
the Belt and Road Initiative, how it has brought about uh, infrastructure development to countries like Pakistan and to some African countries. And it's not, as uh, Dr. Arif said, a charity. It's not meant to be a charity, but it's a business venture. Business ven venture based on a win-win uh, uh, basis. Like it has to be a win-win situation for both the giver and the receiver. And this is how things are progressing, not only in Pakistan, but uh, so where, wherever the Belt and Road Initiative has its footprint.